Hello and welcome to the 18th episode of the Heavy NFLD official podcast. I am your host, Akhenaten, of course, bringing you the latest in heavy metal, punk rock, as well as progressive rock coming from all over Eastern Canada. And this episode, we're actually going to take a very specific look at a city that is very near and dear to me, that city being Montreal, Quebec, the place where I live right now. And let me tell you, the amount of time that I've spent in this city has uh, brought me into contact with a lot of people in the local scene, people who are very, very talented musicians who have a lot of great, awesome, killer, kick-ass music to offer the world. So the purpose of this episode is to show you 10 bands that I really think you should check out because not only am I friends with a good chunk of these people, but... Again, they are really, really great musicians, and I think their music deserves to be heard. So, without further ado, we're going to hop right into the first track here. The first song is by a band called Doom and Blue. That's not and blue, that's an blue. An apostrophe, an A, and an N. No D there. And uh, you might know Doom and Blue because there is actually a Newfoundlander in this band. Yes, sir. In fact, Lee Whiskey, the former guitarist of Mutank, a band that everyone listening to this should probably know, is uh, actually the guitarist in this band. And he is joined by his drummer, Jimmy Antle, who is in like five or six other bands. I'm not even going to list them all right now because there's way too many. But we're going to play another song from a band that he's also in later on in the show. But these guys are a two-piece. They describe themselves as a mixture of everything from metal to rock to even a bit of surf and a bit of punk in there too. But I think they can best be described as stoner metal. They're all about that riff. So this is their first single, their debut single, which came out uh, towards the end of last year. And it's called Two Bit Son of a Bitch.
All right, so first up there, again, we had Two Bits, Son of a Bitch by Doom and Blue. A uh, great little helping there of some fast-as-fuck Motorhead-esque stoner metal. And that was followed up by a band called Kato, although I'm not entirely sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly because they have an umlaut above the O at the end of their name. And I don't know if that makes it um, some kind of different sound or whatever, but I'm calling them Kato. And the name of that track was The Herbologist, or uh, I'm going to butcher this, L'Herbologue in French. And it's a song from their most recent full-length album called M39, which is available on Bandcamp right now, as is that single from Doom and Blue. So you should go to Bandcamp, check out both of these bands, buy their music, support local. Um, Of course, that was a little bit of a stoner rock section there, so we're going to move along into something a little bit different, but sort of tangentially related. We're going to go to a band called King Getterix. Now, these guys, I saw them play for the first time back in, I believe it was October of last year at a little bar called AJ's, and they blew my fucking mind. These guys sound like a combination of Rush, Yes, and Pink Floyd if they all had a baby, which is incredible because those three bands are amazing, and well, especially Rush. I mean, I'm a huge Rush fan, and that is immediately what these guys reminded me of. So if you like any of those bands, I can guarantee you, you're probably going to like King Getterix quite a bit. So this is a track from their most recent album, which just came out literally like a week ago, and the name of the song is Terracotta Woods.
and peaceful to each other. Eat recycled food. Recycled food.
fuck yeah, now that's what thrash metal is supposed to sound like. I especially love that little Metallica reference there right at the end of the song. But uh, that was called You're Erased by a band called Chemical Way, which, by the way, uh, the guitarist of Kato, who we played earlier in the show, is also the guitarist and sometimes partial vocalist of Chemical Way, which is the name of this band. So yeah, uh, that was again You're Erased by Chemical Way, and before that we played uh, Terracotta Woods by King Gedrix. Up next we have one of my absolute favorite bands in this local scene, a band that has been described as Scooby-Doo Metal, which sounds really goofy and also sounds like uh, something you would describe the band Ghost as, but I promise you these guys do not sound like Ghost, even though I'm a huge fan of Ghost, but um, the name of this track is A Horrific Return by a band called Ritual Master. Sometimes that is better. So once again, that was a horrific return by Ritual Master. And we've reached the halfway point of the show, so you know what that means? It's the news segment. When it comes to the biggest stories that we've seen over the last month, of course, none is as well known as the uh, horrendous snowstorm that completely decimated St. John's back in January. Uh, of course, what has been dubbed NLWX, or Snowmageddon 2020 by some, 
left most residents stuck inside for days on end, left the entire city in a state of emergency for a week or more, and ended up getting the Canadian fucking armed forces called in to help clean up the disaster. Uh, now, if you go over to the Heavy NFLD blog, there's actually a series of photos that I posted in an article over there from various people in the local scene showing just how bad the snowfall was. And if you're not from St. John's or from that area of Newfoundland or you're from somewhere else in Canada and you're listening to this right now, go and look for those pictures because, good God, I have never seen snowfall like that in my life. Now, aside from that, one of the other biggest stories that recently broke is of a new festival that's happening on the West Coast, spearheaded by Andrew Aylward, the vocalist of the technical metalcore band Shao Kahn, and the ex-vocalist of hardcore punk band Trash Juice. The festival is called Rockfest on the Rock, and it's going on from June 26th to June 27th at Retro in Cornerbrook. They're having two all-ages shows and then two 19-plus shows. So far, there have been four bands announced, uh, three of which are on slightly the heavier side. Of course, Sons of an Eastern Moon was the first to be announced, followed up by 454, which is an alt-rock band from St. Anthony of all places, which is really interesting. And just yesterday, there was also the announcement that Disposition will be playing. So stay tuned for more announcements as we find out more about the lineup of this festival. Apparently there's going to be 16 bands playing, depending on if all of the bands that Andrew has proposed do in fact agree to play. And aside from that, the other biggest story that we uh, have for you is that we actually have our own official merch now. Yes, that is completely true. We actually have merch. Now, granted, all that we have at the moment are pins. Uh, We have about 100 small pins that were made by Dan Matheson, the owner of Turbo House here in Montreal. He's a really good guy, makes high-quality material, so if you're in the market for pins, I would recommend hitting him up. Uh, I've got Miss Walker pins from him before, and now we have the heavy NFLD ones, but we are looking into doing things like stickers, patches, coasters, and t-shirts coming up in the next several months, so please stay tuned for more updates on our own merch. When it comes to new albums that have been recently released, we of course have two that were very long awaited. One is the debut album from Jaded Truth, the three-piece grunge band. Uh, The name of the album is RX, and it came out just a couple weeks ago. I've been listening to it nonstop. Honestly, it's one of my favorite records to come out so far this year from the Newfoundland scene, although there haven't been that many. I'm sure there will be some others that come out uh, quite soon, but honestly, this one, it really, really blew me away. Michael Small, the drummer, he's really, really improved his production. So if you're a fan of grunge, especially if you like bands like the Melvins, like Nirvana, highly recommend checking them out. Uh, The other is Sludge Fist, the death metal band from Cornerbrook, who finally came out with their debut self-titled record as well. I've also listened to that album, and I think it's fucking killer as well, so I do recommend you check both of those out. Aside from that, we've also got the uh, debut live EP from Last Cigar, the uh, under-18 stoner rock band. Uh, These guys, they released uh, an EP of five tracks, I believe. It's called Live at Treble Lounge. You can find that on their band camp. And we also have Nocturnal Prayer, a three-piece black metal band, supposedly from St. John's, though these guys are keeping their identities under wraps. Uh, They released their debut demo back in 2019, which got featured in Decibel's Demo Listen category. And that's honestly fucking amazing, so props to Nocturnal Prayer for that. But just last week, they released a second demo with a very long and wordy title, called May You Lay Waste to Astral Gods with Star Disintegration. And yes, may you please do that. Aside from those albums, we also had a new single from Nemophilus to the atmospheric, dark, ambient project of Christopher Crane, who put out a song called Hiraeth, a tribute to Frodo Baggins from J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. And you can find that on his YouTube channel. When it comes to new albums that have been announced, there are quite a few. We've got a demo being teased by a brand new black and thrash band called Agonor, which is actually a one-man band. It's a solo project, much like uh, myself and Mistwalker. We have the uh, free jazz prog rock band Big Space, who announced a new album that is definitely coming out this year. Uh, Shredder extraordinaire Chris Feener announced a solo EP and already put out one song from it called Chameleon, which you can find on his YouTube channel. 
Uh, another solo project, the alternative metal hard rock uh, project called Crisis Averted. They announced that they will be putting out a new album called Tempest, which will hopefully be out sometime in 2020. Uh, we have the solo musician John Swift, who announced that he's working on a solo EP right now, which hopefully will also be out this year. And uh, his other band, uh, the band that he's in, Waste of Corpses, who uh, initially were known as May As Well, and they also changed their genre, in fact, besides just their name, they changed their genre from new metal to death metal, are also coming out with an EP entitled All Will Suffer. They just recently released the uh, cover art, which you can find on our blog at heavynfld.wordpress.com. And lastly, we have the Progressive Groove Metalers featuring Chris Feener and uh, John Charles. Kin, I think that's how it's pronounced. It's spelled Q-Y-N, so I'm not entirely sure. But their debut full-length album entitled Archetype is coming out literally this coming week. February 13th, so mark your calendars, and also, they are doing pre-orders for physical copies, so if you want one, hit up John Charles. And of course, because it's February, it is, of course, Record Production Month, which means that everyone in the local scene is going to scramble their asses off to try and get an album done before the end of the month, before March 1st, and I am one of those people. Uh, when it comes to metal bands or punk bands or anyone that's doing any kind of heavy or aggressive music in the scene, there haven't been too many announcements. But the first is Adventure Team Assemble, which is the new band uh, from my friend Corey Merrigan and a couple other guys. They're doing some kind of genty metalcore sort of thing, and uh, they, they never really said that they were going to officially get the album done, but they're going to give it a go. So I really do hope that they actually finish their RPM and get a full album out. They released their debut single called Ember uh, a couple months back, back in 2019. So if you want to check that out, go to their SoundCloud account. But here's hoping that they do actually accomplish the RPM challenge and they get a full album done by the end of February. And when it comes to me, uh, I decided to go with uh, more of a death metal project, death metal approach this year very OSDM or at least uh, hardcore death metal approach, something that sounds kind of like Gate Creeper or Creeping Death or maybe even a tiny sliver of blood incantation in there, even though I'm nowhere near as good a musician as any of those bands. Uh, the name of the project is Sarcophagon, and uh, I already have the album art done. I posted it to Twitter uh, the other day. So far, I have about three songs composed, and we are at February 9th, so... Time's running out, you know, only got two or three weeks to get this thing done, but I'm really gunning for it, so wish me luck. When it comes to uh, other news, of course, there have been a few band name changes. As I mentioned before, May as well, who were once a new metal band, changed their name to Waste of Corpses and became Death Metal. But we also had the progressive doom metal band, Goon, who, uh, in my opinion, sound kind of like The Gathering. They changed their name from Goon to Hag. And they did that right at the beginning of this year. So what I can assume from that is that they're going to have new music from us, uh, from them soon. Hopefully within the next couple of months. That would be really awesome because we haven't heard anything from them in quite a while. And uh, in the horrific NFLD category, our uh, slowly but surely building horror community that we have in Newfoundland, there have been a few things happening. Uh, the Grindmine guys, they've been working on a new film called uh, Mummering Legends, I believe, which is really cool. Uh, they've been posting a lot about that on Facebook, on Instagram, so go and check that out and mark your calendars for any potential release date that comes with that. Everything that the Grindmine guys have released has been really, really high quality stuff, so please go and give them your support. We also have Rendering Glint Films, a few friends of mine from back in the day in Glovertown who released their own short film about mummering called Lovely Mummers, which is available for viewing on YouTube right now. It is a short film, but they are planning on doing a feature length at some point, though that really does depend on things like funding, of course, because one of the guys lives in Vancouver. Actually, him and a bunch of the other staff members, they all live on the west coast of the country, so it's a lot more difficult when they're flying out here to try and film on location in Twillingate as they did for the short film. And we also have uh, my friend, of course, the aforementioned Christopher Crane, who is the guy behind Demophilist. He has his own film production uh, company. 
named Dark Bay Films, and he released a horror short inspired by The Lighthouse by Robert Eggers, entitled Sweet Dreams, which is also available on his YouTube channel right now. So I highly recommend you go and give that a check. And that about does it for local news, so let's head into what's happening in the mainstream. Um, unfortunately, a lot of what's happening in the mainstream right now is either people dying or people getting really fucking sick. We have Ozzy Osbourne who got diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, which is incredibly sad, but I mean, I'm amazed that Ozzy Osbourne is even still alive at this point. Like, the man has done so many drugs throughout the course of his life that it's amazing that he's still clinging on let alone the fact that he's actually coming out with a new album. That's mesmerizing. We also have Juan Al, uh, Alderete. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce his last name, but he is, of course, a bass player who has performed with Marilyn Manson and the Mars Volta, who is now in a coma following a horrific biking accident. Uh, on the plus side, though, on in more positive news, we know that Dave Mustaine is reportedly cancer-free after his... Uh, throat cancer diagnosis, which happened towards the middle point of last year. And on top of that, James Hetfield, who uh, went into rehab towards the end of 2019, has reportedly uh, reappeared in the public eye after leaving rehab. So those are at least two positive stories to balance out the two previous bad ones. But unfortunately, it's not all good. Because in the last month and a half, we've had so many deaths of really high-ranking celebrities in the metal world um, and the rock world as well, and it's it's very sad. Neil Peart, of course, the beloved drummer of progressive rock Titans Rush, passed away earlier in January, and I've never been as upset about a musician's death, but you know what? He performed his heart out for years and years. He left us with so much timeless, amazing music. Uh, songs that, you know, I can recite, like, word for word right now if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. And it's sad to see him go, but you know what? He left a legacy behind, and if you believe in an afterlife, then perhaps he's up there with his wife and daughter. So, blessings to Neil Peart. Uh, we also have Reed Mullen, the drummer of Corrosion of Conformity, who passed away earlier in January. Um, I had the pleasure of seeing Corrosion of Conformity last year at Heavy Montreal, and they were amazing. They were so good live. You know, the drums were punishingly heavy, and it's sad to see someone go, especially at a young age. He wasn't that old. He was only in his 50s. We also had Joe Payne, the former bassist of Divine Heresy and Nile, who passed away in his 50s uh, earlier in January as well. And then we also had uh, Sean Reiner, the drummer of Cynic, who also died, and he was only in his 40s. Um, I mean, Sean is was an incredible drummer. I could I couldn't for the life of me wrap my head around so many of the drum patterns that he performed on some of Cynic's albums. Like uh, Trace and Air is one of my favorite prog albums of all time, and every time I listen to that, I'm just blown away by by the riffs and the drum patterns and the rhythm of it. It's just it's mind blowing, and it's so sad to see so many people die so young because all of these guys except for Neil Peart were really just in their they were middle age you know they were in their 40s and 50s that's way too young to go and just recently just last week we also had uh, Diego Farias um, Diego Farias the former guitarist of uh, the Jets band the Volumes who passed away suddenly in his 20s now that is just way too young so unfortunately we've had a lot of deaths in the metal community within the last uh, month and a half so here's hoping that going forward into 2020, the outlook is not so grim. But all that being said, that does it for the news portion of this show. So we're going to head right back into the music, back to the Montreal episode, our Montreal-focused episode, where we look at all of these bands in this local scene here in this city, and I show you exactly what I think is the best, at least. So coming up, we have... Ve Victus, the first song off of the new album from the Black and Thrash band, Disastra.
All right, again, that was Ve Victus by Disaster, followed up by Skinwalker by the melodic technical death metal band Heldon. And uh, most of you might know I actually was the drummer in Heldon for the last several months. I played three shows with them, but unfortunately had to leave the band simply because of a lack of time and having to focus on some other projects, including a new band that I'm part of right now, but that's going to stay under wraps for a little while. But uh, you know what? I wish the guys in Held On the best. Honestly, they were some of the best musicians I've ever worked with. Very, very talented group of guys. And I hope that they find another drummer and another bassist too. Because, yeah, they fucking kicked ass. And, you know, they, they've opened for some really cool bands too. So I think that they deserve all the success that comes to them. Uh, coming up next, we're going to take things in a little bit of a punk direction. Because we haven't played any punk yet on this show. We're going to go with a band called Consequences. Now, these guys are one of the best punk bands in Montreal right now, in my opinion. This is a song from their debut EP, and the name of the song is We're Screwed. Ça 
Okay, so that was We're Screwed by Consequences, followed up by Roulotte's by Gummo. Uh, Gummo's a local francophone punk band, of course, although they kind of mix punk with other sounds like grunge, hard rock, a bit of metal and thrash and sludge in there too. It's kind of a big cornucopia of things, and I really enjoy it. So uh, both those bands have music up on Bandcamp. In fact, all the bands that we've played so far on this episode have a Bandcamp. So please go to their Bandcamp, buy this music, and support these local artists, because who knows? Maybe they'll be making their way out east sometime, or maybe a band from out east will be making their way up to Montreal, and they might share the stage with one of these acts. So help support your fucking local scene. This is going to be the last track of the night. It is a song from a person that we mentioned earlier in the show, Jimmy Antle, the drummer of Doom and Blue. He is also the drummer of this band, but these guys are definitely nothing like Doom and Blue. They're, in fact, more in the vein of melodic and technical thrash metal, I guess. A little bit of death metal in there, too. It's kind of, a again, a big cornucopia of different styles. The name of the band is Merton Scythe, and the name of the song is Smoking Weed Through the Horn of Satan. (laughs) 